So in this video, I want to talk about a couple of small things when it comes to Subaru as a character. I may delve deeper into other components, but I kind of wanted to hyper-focus on one specific point, mainly because with all animes, as they get popular or as their new seasons air, there's always going to be those that have pearls of wisdom, of knowledge, and all these words that they throw out, like things like, ReZero is not a masterpiece, it's garbage, Subaru's weak. All these things that just don't really have much weight behind them when you put any deep analysis into it. So I wanted to talk about a couple of those things, and then maybe I may talk about more of them later on, but I do think it's kind of laughable when people do refer to ReZero as garbage, and then when they criticize the series, they have no idea what's going on in the series, they just kind of throw things at a wall and hope it sticks. It's very easy to call things bad when you use generalized statements and you kind of just go, oh yeah, character weak. And it's like, okay, but is that a bad thing? Having a character that's weak? I mean, with Subaru, one of the things that I actually like about him is that he is weak. He is vulnerable. He is human. He's not some generic isekai protagonist that's just been transferred to an alternative world and has eight girls falling head over heel over him trying to ride on his little jolly lolly and that's the entire season of the anime it's just them walking around going oh look at me i'm cool i suddenly know martial arts and i can like nuke a continent and woo i've got the level of nine thousand but there's no actual build-up, there's no explaining of how they suddenly become this strong, it's just they suddenly get reincarnated and suddenly they have all these things that they've never had in their entire life. And their backstory is, I'm just an office worker, or I'm just a high school student, and that's the, ba that's the basics of it. Subaru is a flawed character, he has his strengths, he has his weaknesses, but he is also just someone that's trying to do the best he can with what he has. Now you could say, oh no, he's not actually weak, he's overpowered because he can reincarnate. I wouldn't really refer to reincarnation as a power that really makes him super powerful because he's first got to die to be able to come back. And that's not a pleasant experience. One of the other criticisms that I've seen for Subaru is that, oh, he should just use that power so willingly. Oh, why is he so scared of dying? Even though there are points where he will just throw himself off of the cliff just so he can quickly reset and one of those repercussions is that people kind of look at it as like you know th there's a situation where he tries he doesn't happen and someone goes what the hell are you trying to do and they don't understand what he's trying to do but at the same time the trauma the mental scars i mean there's a reason why he went through that whole arc where he was just losing his mind because he kept resetting 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 whether it was his wanting or not but he's going through these situations where he's got he remembers all this pain he remembers all these different pathways they don't so he's got all this knowledge of different situations and it slowly builds up like trauma is built up over time and the fact that he is as strong as that he is is commendable I think he's definitely done quite well for the situation that he is, but it's not one of those situations where I feel like he's just kind of thrown all that trauma out the window or it's too much. He's trying to cope with what trauma he has, trying to make one step at a time, trying to grit his teeth and trying to push through. And one of those things that he does is he kind of puts on a bit of performance, a bit of a, an act. He kind of, you know, does his little dance and he kind of gets all cheery. To me, that's him trying to cope. He's trying to push through it. That's something that I used to do when I was growing up and I went through definitely some interesting situations in my life I would just grit my teeth and just put on a smile and be energetic and try and fight through those different situations that make you feel really down and depressed in this situation his is much worse he's coming back to life constantly back and forth so how you want to argue the word weak is debatable in itself. Some people could say, well, he's not weak because he's going through these major events. And some people could argue that he is weak because he's crying. But, and I'm saying that he doesn't need to be strong. Like him being weak at moments is good. It shows the human element to him. There are parts where he's been strong. There are parts where he's been weak. It's a cycle. It's, it's a roller coaster of different emotions. And I think that's what I like about Subaru as a character. 
He's not picture perfect. He's not one dimensional. He's not just one of those boring copy paste isekai kind of stories. Now, is there definitely situations where he's kind of acting a little bit simpy, I guess is the new phrase that kids like to throw out? Sure, maybe you could argue that. I mean, he is definitely head over heels for Amelia, but I don't think that's a bad thing inherently. And that's another thing as well, is that a lot of these words get used in a weird way that they're kind of thrown as like an insult, when in reality they shouldn't be seen as an insult. Saying Subaru is weak at certain parts of the story, it, to me, is not an insult. I think it's a true statement, but people try to frame it as an insult. But these are the same people that will sit there and say, ha ha ha, Subaru's weak. <laughs> Maybe he should be tougher. And then if he was super tough, they'd then turn around and go, oh, he's just overly tough, too perfect. It's just one of those boring isekais. They're hypocritical. That is the biggest issue with a lot of these criticisms. They're not analyzing things. They're just trying to grab mud out of any or rubbish that they can find out of anywhere and throw it at it and hope that it sticks. But when it doesn't, they then get moody and go, oh, well, let me find something else to throw at it. I'm not really going to rationalize it, but I'm going to throw it anyway and hope it makes sense. <laughs> and that's why most content creators out there that do these kinds of videos generally have the emotional capacity of a teaspoon and a very thin skin because because it's about bait. But I still feel like it's worth criticizing because there are a lot of people that will rally behind it and go, yeah, Subaru, weak, this is bad. But then they'll complain about an overpowered protagonist. You can't have your cake and eat it too. And I think that's one of the reasons why there are many other animes out there that try to create grounded, realistic characters that get criticism. Because people can't use their emotions for two minutes without brain farting and going, oh, too many emotions, I can't think I need to go to TikTok and watch my six second clip because I've got the attention span of a preschooler. To me, Subaru is well crafted in that sense. Is there flaws in it? Sure, and everything has flaws. But I also do think when you look at Subaru as a character that where you claim that he's simpy, it's just like he's in love. What, 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 do you mean, what do you think he's meant to do? Put on one of those stupid personas and be like, yeah, I'm in love. Girls should fool. Like, again, you're doomed if you do, you're doomed if you don't. Because this is the thing. If he's head over heels, but he's not like he's doing things really stupid. I mean, in the early stage of the story, he definitely did some stupid stuff. But then he learnt from those mistakes. That's called character development. I know. What a crazy concept. Character development in a story. Wow. What a travesty. Must be garbage. Must not be a masterpiece because character development in a story shouldn't be allowed. But then you look at these, these moments where he grows, but he's still very much... He's, he's following through on his ambitions of wanting to help someone that he cares about. You also remember he's got memories of a past that doesn't exist. So he has fond memories of Amelia, and even though Amelia doesn't have those memories because of the kind of the time thing, but he's very much in love. There's nothing wrong with being in love. And if he desires to follow Amelia and help Amelia on her goals, then that's his desire. Now, the whole idea of why doesn't he want to go home, there's a multitude of reasons. One, you can be swept up in the whole moment of a new adventure, a new life. It's like this whole idea of, oh, why doesn't he want to go home to his family? because he wants to do something new and crazy and adventure. Like, at the end of the day, that's something that happens with many people. You know, they grow up, they spend time with their family, and then they go, you know what, I'm going to go on an adventure. And you say your farewells, but you keep them close to your heart. And maybe one day you'll see them again. And you try and keep in contact. But in this situation, it's a bit harder for Subaru. But he's not dwelling on the past. And at the same time, how does he know if he can even go home? He doesn't really know. He, he can only go with the flow and just kind of keep moving forward. I mean, if the entire premise of, of the story was just him trying to find a way home, it'd be kind of very boring, wouldn't it? I mean, the whole point is, is that he's been transported to an alternative world. He's got these powers. He's made new friends. He's made new acquaintances. And he's trying to help someone that he's in love with achieve their overall objectives and goals in life. I don't see anything bad about that. I mean, sure, you could claim he's a simp, but again, is that really a bad thing? I mean, this is the thing that I'm getting to the point. Weak, simp, what, what, what do you want? These to be only seen as negative so he can't fall in love and want to help someone achieve their goals? 
I mean, Amelia has been quite a heavy supporting pillar for him, helping him through some of these situations, even though she can barely comprehend it because of all the time stuff. She's just helping where she can. And those also around him. What I find interesting is the desperation to find criticism for a character that is demonstrating that they actually aren't this boring one-dimensional character. Instead, that that's what they desire. I think in and itself is demonstrating that people that throw those kinds of insults at Subaru are more just trying to create a character that is even more boring and stupid and flip-flop all around the place from being too overly weak to too overly strong and then they'll just criticize it for the exact same things. It's that saying, you're doomed if you do, you're doomed if you don't. I think Subaru was a very well-balanced character and I do enjoy that sort of development as he's going through and he's just trying to go with the moment at the time, one day at a time. As I like to say, every day is a new adventure. You just got to take one step at a time. And that's kind of what Subaru is doing. He's taking one step at a time, trying to overcome these issues. And as far as his powers go, they're not exactly like he can kind of control where he spawn points. And yeah, he can kind of choose to, you know, fly off a cliff and try and reset backwards. But again, it's not exactly a fun experience. And he's only doing that out of desperation. And yeah. It's, it's not a pleasant ride that he's going to be on. It's, as they say, it's, it's a series about suffering, but he's doing the best he can. Again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Keep it civil. Keep it chill. I'm definitely enjoying ReZero. I'm enjoying the ride that it is, but I do feel like some of the criticisms towards Subaru are kind of a little bit one of those where it's kind of like they're looking for things. They're desperate for things to slug at it. And I think at the end of the day, sure, you could argue Subaru's weak, but... To me, that's a good thing, that there's some weakness in him. Is he a bit simpy? Yeah, he is. But there's nothing wrong with being madly in love. The fact that somehow being madly in love is somehow a sin, when many years ago, I'd say probably five, ten years ago, it was seen as a good thing. Now suddenly it's a curse and a sin to be madly in love. I find that kind of a little bit weird. I feel like people are just so desperate to bring others down because maybe, just maybe, they're a little bit seeing something of themselves in those criticisms. 